Okay. Nice to see you all again. Uh, this is a was a great win last night for us uh, in Williams Arena in Minnesota. We got back uh, fairly early as it would turn out, like a one at one a.m., which is for the, in the Big Ten, it's usually two or three. So we're fortunate to have a seven o'clock game there and uh, to be able to get back. So today we're, we're you know we, we got a, a we we worked on the on the video of. Michigan State and Minnesota, the whole plane ride back, the, the coaches did. Uh, today we all been up early working on it again. We'll have a, you know, a very sh uh, a walkthrough today and a lot of saving the legs and getting them ready uh, for this with a, with a day and a, with a really a, a practice and a half. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult, but it is something that you have to be able to do. So uh, we'll have a good practice. We'll mimic with some things you'll see. Uh, tomorrow will be a great uh, day for us to just get ready, and we have we have uh, we don't play again until Thursday, so we have Sunday off. So we just tell the kids we just got to just pour these next 48 hours into this game, and uh, so we can be as ready as we can be. Really excited that we have the majority of the members from the '89 team here. We have Steve Fisher back. Um, it's tremendous. Add, add about 200 other alums uh, of the basketball program are here. It's something we've really worked hard at to to just make everyone feel this is one great big family. This this the entire environment that we have here. So uh, there's a lot of logistics involved with that. Lisa Nicholson has done an incredible job of putting that, and Chris Hunter of putting that all together. And uh, we're excited about that as well. So uh, going to be a great game. Uh, Michigan State is so good. Uh, you know they have the names change. They've been hit by the injury bug a little bit. And I don't see any difference right now. They're playing terrific. Uh, they really have a good team. Obviously, they have a great system that's in place. Um, we got two really tremendous programs in this state, as I've said many times. And this is a great game that, you know, I'm sure it has a lot of interest everywhere. And uh, we're going to try to do the best to be ready for it. Ethan, do you want to start us off? Uh, John, without Nick Ward, I guess, how are things different for John Teske? I, I, th I think right now they, they you know, they they do this great job of grooming the next guy, you know. So uh, Ward is a really good player and has given us fits over the, over time. But they just plug in Tillman. He's good. You know, neither one of them are three point shooters, but both of them are tremendous power players. Uh, <coughs> Nick Ward had, or uh, Tillman has more offensive rebounds than Nick Ward. Uh, Goins has more offensive rebounds than Nick Ward. So I think they're playing really well without him. I'm sure they'd love to have him, but. There's not this tremendous drop off inside. These two guys are good. Chris, uh, how critical is a transition defense, and what do you do to prepare for their? Probably everything in this game. I, you know, you'd like to have you'd like to have two or three days to <coughs> prepare, and then a day to rest, so that you can get the effort. But they're as good as anybody in the country, and that's really important. That's where they they really are. The Cassius is elite in it. The Pigs are elite at running the floor. McQuaid's running one lane, and he's deadly right now. Uh, Cassius can drop off, he can pull up, he can go all the way to the rim. It's really a challenge. And so we, we, we work on it all year long, but not, not at the speed that they're going to come at us. So, so it may take us a while to get used to it, and hopefully we do. And the last short turnaround didn't go real well for you guys. Penn State, have you done anything differently, or is it different? Well, it's, we haven't done this turnaround yet. Right. We just started the turnaround. So will you do anything differently? Well, we don't have to travel to State College. Right. That will be different. Yeah. Right, we're in our own beds and we're right yep. here. Yeah, so no, that can't be an excuse. I don't, it wasn't a short turnaround at Penn State. It was we just didn't play very well. Jack, John, I know uh, coming into this game, Isaiah is the only player you have on the team who's from Michigan that's played against Michigan State. So with five incoming freshmen, that they've seen how some of these games have gone the past few years. But what's it like for them going into this game, going against their rival, or in this case, the first place in the conference? Yeah, I think there's only three players on the team that have played against Michigan State. If I'm not correct, maybe but no, Isaiah Jordan. They're they're, they're, a, they're a five. We played against them, but not. I don't think here. I don't think we have that because we we only played them once or twice last year in the tournament. No, it, it's. I mean, every this is something that uh, that our, our our kids are all ingrained with. You know, not not necessarily by me, but by all the media and everything of, of this game is is omnipotent to to so many people, and. Uh, if that's a word, I think it's a word, um, and, and it's just it's, it means a lot to so many people for them to for uh, the bragging rights, and it's one game at a time, but it could be four times this year. You don't know, and so you just kind of try to take it one day at a time, and it's 
it's an important, important game. Uh, and they're, they're, they are standing in the way of a Big Ten uh, or conference championship, right? And so are several other teams. This is just another one of those teams, and they're really good. But I know it means an awful lot to our fans. That's why it means a lot to us. And I know that in the past you've said that, you know, once you're in game mode, you're not really hearing the crowd, you're blocking things right. out. But with 200 alumni here, with the 89 seed in the house, yeah. with Michigan State here, how – I mean, are you expecting the most charged up atmosphere in Chrysler? Maybe We've had some year? really good atmospheres, but this probably will rival some of those because I think, you know, so many people go off the ratings, and I, I you know, I don't do that, but I think the, the last time that we had this, I do remember there were some pretty epic games that we played, you know, that went right down to the last seconds in, in a charged up atmosphere in here. So, I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be great. We've, you know, we have had several sellouts in a row. I'll let you guys decide what was louder, you know, uh, between this game and other games. But I'm sure it will be a really, uh, it'll be a great atmosphere, and hopefully, it's 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 a great atmosphere for everybody, including family, uh, children, everything. We're, we're, I'm really hoping to, and send out a message that everything stays nice and clean, and we just we root for both teams, and we do a great job of creating a great atmosphere for Michigan. Say that with John. Right. Going back to John, what do you guys need? John, oh, we take those three threes again if we could get it. That's for sure. <laughs> that would be really be helpful to us. Not any, and stay out of foul trouble, right? Length at the rim, right? They, they, they've always had a great mix of inside and outside play, much better than ours mix of inside and outside. Their, their fives aren't, I think Costello shot a few threes, but their, 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 their fives don't shoot the outside shots like ours do, but they do a great job of putting it inside. So John's got to got to be able to do a lot of different things, but his he's been up against some pretty good big guys right now, and he's going to have some more good big guys to go against. But just making them miss, and then their offensive rebound, as always, is elite, and that's another thing we got beat a little bit with last night. But they got you know they had Murphy and Otero. They got guys just they got guys just like that that just really get the boards. They say go when I saw today that that Goins and, and uh, Tillman have more offensive rebounds each. Than, than Ward has, that's pretty compelling. And then Cassius is having a great year this year. What do you guys do to try to slow him down in this game? And how important is this for Xavier? Well, they're, they're all, I mean, those are two guys that are, have been competing probably since they were eight years old. And they, I know that that's, that's one thing both of them got to try and guard each other without getting in foul trouble. Um, yeah, I think you got to load up against Cash and you just can't see one jersey. But you can't leave McQuaid, right? You can't leave Arns. You know, those guys are big time shooters. You can't uh, go down and double down in, in the post too much because they, they pass the ball. They're averaging almost 20 assists a game. So they're really good and, and that's gonna that's why they're, they're that's why they've been so good this year. They've had some great runs, you know, and played some I really played a played a slightly tougher schedule than us and got almost the same record. Andrew? With some adversity with these injuries. Uh, everywhere you've been there's been a rivalry. Um, I'm wondering always have the sort of mentality you have now don't don't put too many chips into one game or did it take time no I, it, no it, it, it's been basically the same because you basketball's just different I told you guys before and our, our young guys are here you know football games are you play them once and it probably is going to determine who's going to go to the championship right that's it that's it there should be this but but with us it's there's a game and then there's another game and let's play the tournament and there's another game and oh we made the NCAA there's another game you can't just like say, "Hey, this is like life or death." Where, where it's never life or death, but with a cow, with a football season, you know, hockey. I think plays them six times. I don't think there's like this life or death situation. So it is really important, I know, to 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 be at our best and win this game. But it's not how we measure our success. And then has there been any thought at all to tweaking the starting lineup at all? The or Isaiah, anything like that? Any, I, absolutely zero. All right. Why? Is it, should we? <laughs> no, no. Okay. Okay. Chris, what did you do? We're, we're 24 and 3. Let's change everything. <laughs> Just make it uh, fun, being funny. When, so, did, uh, when did you first meet Steve, Steve Fisher, and how has that relationship developed? You know, it, this, is, this is funny. One of my first Nike trips I ever went on, here I was, the coach at Canisius. So it must have been in the early 90s. Um, and I go on the Nike trip, and there he is. And he's like, wow, they just. They won the national championship, and he's got tremendous teams. And he could, we, we struck, 
he actually stuck up a relationship by the pool. He probably doesn't remember it. And I was, you know, just sort of talking. And he was so nice to me. And then, you know, ever since uh, we've sort of stayed, we, we stayed in touch, we see each other on the road. I always remembered my name and a lot of, when you're the coach at Canisius in Richmond, a lot of those guys don't know your name. He always did. And then when I get, we got the job, you know, I think we spoke within, you know, months after I got the job, if not weeks, and so complimentary, and we're so excited that he's coming back. I think it's just a great thing uh, for him to be with that team. We're going to have a big dinner for the, him and the whole team. Um, I just think it's, it's when you've been coached as long as he has or if I have, there's special moments that when he, with your team, and then 30 years after your teams, you realize that's why you coached, and that's why you see these men grown up now to be so successful. And now you, 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 it puts it sort of all together, you know, the reasons, the purposeful life that we try to lead. Did you, do you remember watching the 89 team at all? And, and yeah, I was in Seattle. I was okay. actually in Seattle. It was, it was uh, I think that, uh, I don't know why, why, I, why I, I think I was in Seattle twice. I didn't go to a Final Four until maybe 84, but it must have been there in 84 and 89, because I went both times. And uh, yeah, it was tremendous. And, and I do, uh, Kathleen was with me, and I remember us walking away and said, that is the best fight song we have ever heard in our lives. <laughs> and we sort of rooted for them. We used to get all, all four of the kids a different jersey from the Final Four kid, Final Four. And there's actually a picture with Patrick with the Michigan jersey on after the 89. And, and so it's a, uh, but we, we did agree, that's the fight song. But it had no say, hey, we want to coach there someday. It just sort of happened. James, John, the rivalries, I guess there could be animosity between coaches. Uh, yeah. Like it's between you and Tom, I guess. No, not really. I mean, it, I don't think we've ever been to dinner or anything like that. I don't think that, but we do, are, are, we understand we're both, have, are, have, have re are really blessed be coaching at these two universities. There's a lot of respect. Uh, we do share, like, it, it, when our escapes are similar, right? Our family and, and uh, getting on a lake in the summertime for a short time. Uh, but there's like no no animosity at all. Uh, but you know, we don't we don't text often. We don't call often. But if there's something big in the league, he and I usually connect and say, okay, what do you think of this? Jim Delaney's going to do this. What 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 what, what do you think? Or the NCA is doing. Both of us are involved in, in, in the NCA. Him, he more from the NABC, um, and with my ethics coalition experience, there was a lot, during this last decade, there's been a lot of input about the changing world of the NCA that he and I share. Has there been any maybe moments that maybe exemplify the respect you guys have? Well, I certainly certainly when he called, which was one of the first calls this year after I had my heart surgery, but. No, I, I think there, there's, we both understand um, the, the challenges of this life. And it's a great life. I mean, we're, we're, we're compensated so well. We have so many just great things. But the demands on, on our life, right, there's, a, there, there's some uh, connection there that you know, just to making sure that when your summer is, is, all, is all recruiting, right, that you understand why you get a big paycheck. Uh, at the same time, we're always trying to get back to just our roots as well, because he's a—he's he comes from a small town. I come from a small town. I think Iron Mountain might be much bigger than Burke, New York, actually. Uh, but it's—it's, it's, you know, I think we come from similar beginnings. Noah, um, curious back earlier in your career, are there any other rivalries that you've been a part of that you, you know, really stood out to you, and that you know, maybe people don't know that much about? No, no, Canisius, it was Niagara and St. Bonaventure. Those, those were like huge for us when I was there. And then Richmond VCU was, was the enemy. You know, that was it. And then the Pitt, West Virginia backyard brawl. Right. I mean, th those were times when I just, I remember we hadn't beaten Pitt for, in, by, until my third year maybe, and we beat them. And it was like this release off my, our back because they hadn't beaten them in a long time. And Pitt was really good. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, we sort of played equally the rest of the time. So it, it's, it's, it, we, I realized that I think at that moment, right, how much it meant to our fans. And the same thing with, at Richmond. We were fortunate to have some wins over VCU. And uh, so that, I knew how much that meant to the Richmond fans. And um, I remember the kid, we, we won at St. Bonaventure one time, and, and, and uh, I, they, they, it was like been 30 or 40 years. 
and they said we hadn't won since Roosevelt was president, and somebody said, yeah, Teddy Roosevelt was the president then. <laughs> and of course it was Franklin, but it, I mean, it's been a long time. So it was really a, uh, uh, there's been some great moments there and some great rivalries. Any left with Sean? Uh, John, you, uh, you, you talked about Michigan State being the standard, at least in the conference, and that's where you, you wanted to be in your they one of the standards. I think we walked into Purdue was a standard at that time, and Wisconsin were standards, not the standard. Right, right. But they're good standards. standards. Right, right. Yes. But you're, you're head to head. Let's not give them more credit. Right, <laughs> okay. They already got enough. Okay. You're, you're head to head, your overall record, your success in the tournament. Do you, do you feel like that's where you are at this point? That's I think we, we've been competing, you know, and certainly we had, we started, you know, rebuilding the program doesn't happen like that. So the first three, three years certainly were interesting for us as we tried to get this culture set. We tried to get a foundation of players. Um, since that, that point, I think that we've, um, I, I don't, you can compare things, I think we've been pretty representative of one of the top teams in the conference. And while, uh, you know, teams are going to go, you, the, the, the team, we've got 14 teams now. Teams are going to come up, they're going to go down. You know, Purdue is such a great example of being first, and I think Matt, they finished last one time, and now they're back to first. And then just the, this whole idea that this could be, it could go up and down based on pro attrition, both based on injuries, and for both of these programs to be where they have been with a whole bunch of championships in the last decade, right? I think four Final Fours in the last decade between the two of us, right? Who's doing that? What other state is doing that with two states, two schools in the same state? I know Duke and North Carolina, that's the only one you can compare. And maybe I'm missing a state out there, you know, but it's Virginia and Virginia Tech doing that. It's UCLA and Stanford doing that. You know, it's not happening. You, probably these guys can research it. It really says a lot about what, a, what two great programs we have. And with, along with those other ones that have been in the NCAA tournament this past decade, we had some great programs in the, in the state. It, it will be a little bit of a, a matchup who's guarding who on the other team and what action. There, there, there's certain action that works against certain teams. It's something that they do every day that they counter. But I'm talking any program that we do every day, and we have several things, and then we try to throw that action at them and, and see. But then, who, what are the matchup in that action? And so it's a but. And some of just gut. It's just gut. I just feel it. Like when Teske missed, missed those first threes last night, it was like, oh, he's not even close. And then he was so good, that, and you know, they rattled in because they had so much spin and they were right in the middle. Those last three were like daggers. So, um, and the way JP performed, I have no idea with this team. Uh, all I know is we seem to find a way all the time. Or not all the time, but most of the time. Anybody have anything else? A lot of people point to your first win at the Breslin as a turning point. Stu Doug was a big shot. Right. Yeah. Do, you, do you view it the same way? I think it was pretty big based because of where we were. It wasn't just forget about the Michigan State. We were one in six. And we just lost to Minnesota at home. And we were going to Breslin Center. And they were just coming off a of Final Four, I think. They might have been in the Final Four the year before. We were picked 11th in the league. And we were about to be one in seven. And all of a sudden, our record after that. After that, that day, all the way up to 14, when we had the injuries and guys go to the pro, it was really good. And now, so hopefully, we've picked it up where, you know, when we re had to rebuild, we picked it up again. But that was a big, that was really a big shot. And I think we come out of there one and seven, right? It would have been a whole different thing. It could it could have been, right? but, our, but our kids gave belief. And Novak and Douglas and Morris and Jordan Morgan, all those guys were terrific in, in that game, and that was gave us a lot of hope for the future. Because we be, we played against the, what, what was perceived one of the best if teams in the Big Ten are perhaps the best, and we won at their place. So it changed a lot of things, I think. Yeah, Coach. All right, thanks, everyone.